Well, folks, we've made it to a new lake and it is blasting winds. Blasting winds. Just talked to a fishing freak though. He's been waiting for the wind to die down. He's got an aluminum boat as well. And he's he said, this crappie lake. But I, I, I don't know if fishing's gonna be good. It's muddy and windy, y'all. It is not looking very nice. But this is a, a lake that I really wanted to stop out and just see, see what we got going on. So we're gonna give it a try out here in the old crispy. See if we can stay afloat. Sixty-four degree water, folks. My oh my! I'm gonna idle into this pocket, this cove, and just try to escape out of the wind. Uh, there's just nothing I can do with the wind and the crispy. So I'm gonna look for uh, floater crappies in this creek. Got to get a fish today. You know, get a fish in hand every day of the trip. That's nice. Hey, first spot of the day, came on my Guggen Green hand tie jig. This is a giant. I don't know what it is. If it's a crappie, it's, it's a magnum. We're going in, baby. Uh, went back in this brush pile. There we go. There's a crop. <clears throat> There's a big crop. Come here, baby. Should I return it? I don't know. It almost looks like it's spawning, guys. Looks like spawning behavior. <sighs> you know what? I'm not getting it very good. I'm going to let that one go and just kind of see what happens here. My goal was to get get on some crappie and carry them home on my last day, which is tomorrow. That one spanked it really nice. That's that's what you want. There's another one, boys. These are good ones. Oh, let's get them in here. I might need to keep a couple of these now. Now that we're getting our bearings, I'm basically just right in the middle of this creek where it splits. And I just found like a little piece of brush right there. There's a big one in it, man. A dandy. A big dandy. That's where I've gotten these last two fish. And I'm just going to, I'm basically just going to pluck this thing apart. I think there's a big one in here. Oh my gosh, they're just hammering it. These are all good ones. I don't know if they're spawning on this thing or staging. They are, they're thumping my little hand tie guys. Look at this, look at me go. All studs. All right, we can get five of those be doing all right five juicies there's a few more in here oh big floater big creek cruiser right here oh yeah baby yeah we're doing a little work here magnum Here we go, boys. There's a good one. This is a good one. Oh, oh God, I got her. Oh, God. Biggin'. Biggin'. Big and boys. Oh, nice one. Not as big as I thought it was. <laughs> Absolute magnum signature. Perfect float over her nose. 
Oh yeah, bacon. Fat chunker, baby. Mm. Good eater. Yeah, out here catching stringers, boys. That's nowhere close to a limit. I don't want a limit. I maybe want like that to eight of them and I'll be good. I like to catch a few, keep them fresh and repeat. But I am really stoked right now about catching them on this. I just decided to tie a Guggen Green 16th ounce little crappie jig. And I, I put my, my own uh, materials in there. I just used one of our uh, one of our heads. I just matched it green. It looks pretty sick, and it is working. Um, another thing that I did was I put a little um, I put a little juice in there. Put some of this liquid mayhem. Just put a little juice on it. So I just I rubbed it up in there. I rubbed her up. Oh man, it feels good to get some fish on the line. Sir, getting them yappies. It's a good eater. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was a giant. The size of that one on the Garmin was insane. Base of a stump. Absolutely gone. Can't get better than that. Dead gummit. I'm having fun. My fish was just on the base of a big tree. I knew as soon as I saw the stump and I saw a fish on it, I was like, eh, it's gonna be a good one. And there's even more. There's even more. Oh gosh, y'all. This is like this is happy days right here, man. Just look at these blobs blobs there's that stump i was talking about there's a blob i had one guys i it felt humongous that came off of one of these stumps it just came unpegged i don't know what the deal was this is a big one now this is probably a you know 15 incher right here coming in for a little oh yeah sees it wants it good god that's a good one jeez that's a big one oh gosh oh big floater just big hairy floaters out here oh come here darling oh i love you just fat well we are reaching uh we're reaching the threshold here on how many I want to keep, but we're searching for big. I may have to just come back here in the morning, look for Sally. Oh, it's a floater, boys. Big floater. Six foot of water. Almost inside 15. When she gets inside of 15, it's go time, boys. This is it. Give her that shimmy right there. This is a good one. You know when they, they're tough to catch, they're good ones. Just going to the bottom. A couple of them, there's another one on the bottom, right here. She's coming. She got it. Under the boat. Yeah, that's a big one. That's probably the biggest one. Oh gosh. They're just all big, I just love them. They're just all big, I love them, oh my gosh. Oh, there's a good one. Oh. oh, she stared at it forever. Oh. 
Well, I guess we'll put one more on there at the end of the day, boys. Coming up to this nice brush pile, too. This is some crappies. Y'all, it's really hard to stop fishing right now because I know what's lurking in here. One of my big freshwater goals, three pound crappie. This is it, this is when they're yoked up. This is when they're fat. I mean, we got some amazing crappie right here. Some, some pretty good eaters in there, just studs. And we're gonna take those home. All right, y'all, so now that we have had success on the lake, I want to take you back here to the treehouse, and I want to show you a little recipe. I'm gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of traditional here with uh, some of the new Guggen Eats fish fry, but I also want to show you one of our favorite family recipes, and that is the fish cakes. The kids love it. There's a certain way you gotta uh, prepare the meat, but I'll show you that here in a second. By the way, this stuff is available. You can use my promo code LFG at guggensquad.com and save on this. It is delicious. Gotta try the original. I personally really love the spicy, but uh, if you're not a spicy person, original is tasty. For these crappie cakes, what we're gonna do on half of these fish that I, I get here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut them up in chunks. Crappie also have this uh, the bigger ones, once you start catching, you know, above 12 inches, I like to keep that little portion right there. It's a nice little piece of meat. Um, a lot of people cut it off, but you know, when you get over 12 inches, that's a, that's a little extra meat right there. You don't want to waste. The key for doing these cakes, I've tried it in a food processor. That is not the deal. The best thing to do, oh man, these are such good looking crappie, is I like to cut them in little quarter inch chunks quarter inch chunks and sometimes I will just almost cut it cut it like I'm dicing a tomato almost just like that look at that amazing meat I mean it's so clean you can just see through it well, let's take it to the rest of the kitchen and I'll show you the rest of the recipe in the kitchen with the lovely OSG I know I know there's some some of you out there that are waiting to see OSG for a hot minute here she is. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> here she is, back home from a trip, y'all. And ladies are always happy when you bring home the fish. I'm just saying. Mm, we're happy when you bring home the crappie. Yeah, it's crappie especially. So uh, get your crappie danglers ready. It's a, it's a it's a woman pleaser. I can assure you. Uh, so first of all, let me show you guys the finished product after I filleted the fish and uh, basically cubed it into little quarter inch pieces. So these are our little cubelets. And something that I like to do is uh, put them in a strainer beforehand. You know, I'll shake them around a couple times. Just get the water off of them. I don't want a bunch of water on them when I am breading. I throw them in the fridge usually, you know, midday or a few hours before we're going to eat them. Uh, and I typically like to clean my fish, you know, a day after, sometimes even two days after. So they're nice and chilled, the meat's firm, just seems to, come out a little nicer, especially when you're going into summer. But these are cold water crappies and they're gonna be delicious. It's just nothing quite like harvesting your own onions. No, I'm just kidding. You can what, really what did you just pluck that out of the yard <laughs> like a weed? What was that? No, it's been in my herb garden. We planted these last year. Remember when you picked so many? I, you picked so many of these onions and they were like overgrowing. So I ended up putting a bunch of them in my herb garden and I guess they regrow every year. Oh, so we're never gonna have like fresh green onion yeah. Little little choppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got put it, you. Put it inside the crop cakes. Very or nice. Yeah, uh, inside the crop cakes. The crappie cakes. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is what you need for crappie cakes. You need uh, mayonnaise. You're gonna need some panko. Um, and are you gonna incorporate any of the um, the fish fry? Yes, I'm gonna use it mainly as like a uh, seasoning, but it's also gonna act a little bit as a breading. But really, the thing that you need is the panko. Yeah. So we've never we've. Just full disclaimer, we've never used that in our um, crappie cakes. Our crappie cakes. Just trying it because you know we got it on hand, something new. But I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take the fillets, I'm gonna get my frying pan, and we're just gonna do the old fashioned style. A couple of golden crispies, just because you know, 
I like to do them that way a little bit. One reason that we like to do the crappie cakes as well is because they're actually pretty good reheated. Uh, do them in the air fryer and you can, um, I like to put them in the toaster oven next day, maybe microwave them a smidge. And then you put them in the toaster oven, get that little crispness back in there and they're actually pretty decent reheated. Crappie, I don't, I don't like to freeze them. I feel like it just, it loses some of its umph, its luster. So I, like I said, I like to catch a few, cook them up, and then repeat. Literally rinse and repeat. Keep the dangle going. I don't measure anything, but I kind of go. You do with your mayonnaise scooper though. No, I just, I'm gonna spoon it out actually. So a couple of dollops, three or four dollops of the mayonnaise. Yeah. This is uh, five or six crappie. I think okay. we did five last time, it turned out perfect. All right, so add a little bit of the uh, the fry, the Guggen fry. In there, we're gonna add some of this green onion. If you don't have green onion, you can do yellow onion, white onion. Get those long, skinny <laughs> fingers in there. Wow. Uh, That's the messy part. Yep. You gotta mix it up. Gotta get in there. Yep. Put a little bit more in I there. I can do that. For the seasoning. You can do that. I'm just get a little yeah. bit of dusting there. This is, you could also probably use like smashed up uh, Saltine crackers. crackers, Ritz crackers. Or Ritz, yeah, you could, you could probably go with that. These are gluten free though, that's why we get these because OSG is gluten free. <laughs> and actually helps me too, because um, everybody's stomachs seem to do well with it that. It does, like honestly, it helps Ben. Okay, look, notice the consistency. Scooper. Scooper. Kind of smash it on in there. That's a fun. That's the fun part. Yeah. It almost feels industrial. Okay, and there's one of your cakes. Notice that this is a lot of crappie here. It is. It's not like, it's not like you're you know eating a hush puppy. You're you're getting the crappie. Yes. The first time I made these, I was like, I don't know. These don't feel right because the the fish feel really big. Because I think the first couple times that I've made these, <laughs> we've like pulverized the fish. And then that it was yeah. It ended up tasting like a mush. Um, yeah, like a like a fish stick from yeah. my childhood, which wasn't great. It wasn't good. So I the think the, the key is the key. Is, yes. Yeah. So with uh, with five or six crappie, that I'm gonna say average around 12 inches, which are good ones, good eaters. Uh, we'll probably get. I don't know, a dozen cakes maybe? One, two, three, four. Probably about a dozen cakes, I'm gonna say, which is plenty to feed a family of four. Mm -hmm. And Ben and Emmy love them too. So here on my side of the table, recipe, standard dish. Golden crispy, baby. Uh, typically what I'll do is I'll throw the, the fish fry in here first and I'll coat, coat them one at a time, but you, you can just do a, a full bunch if you want to. Get that adhered, and then I'll do another. Another. Another one. You know, especially if, um, if you're dealing with like 12 to 14 inch crappie. If we're talking like mega huge crappie, I usually just throw them back, but you know, 12 to 14 inch crappie, just great great eaters and I like to do a double coat. If they're like 10 inches, or if you're dealing with like bluegill or little white bass or something like that, or a little large mouth, I don't know. I'm not gonna judge. Um, you may just wanna do one coat on there. Some of the other Googans have told me to just do one coat on the spicy. I like to double coat. Me and, me and Lojo are on that spicy train. Trust it, you know, but a little, little bit of a uh, Olive oil shot there. Yeah, this is actually ghee. Oh, ghee, ghee butter <laughs> shot. Wow. Where'd you get that? Where'd you find that? Probably Whole Foods. Whole Foods. <laughs> whole Paycheck. Who, who would have? Yeah, wholepaycheck.com. Load them up and uh, I think we put them on the fish setting last time. We did. All I right, just second coat. You did a second coat on top there. On top. Mm hmm. So I did it at the bottom. I don't know if you have to do the bottom. It's and this is, I'm going to guess, uh, it's going to be around 350, is what the, yeah, 350. What does the fish setting say? 350, eight minutes. I uh, think that was too much, but I packed it in there. So let's do eight minutes. Okay. I bet you it, I bet you that's good. Okay. Literally just turn it on the fish setting and go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. 
but that might be that might be set for like frozen fish you know who knows all right let's move on to the skillet uh this has been heating up for a little bit so i'm going to turn this down to about medium and we're going to add our olive oil if this is smoking that means we're hot and we're good to go oh yeah she's smoking really bad actually so that's going to be... You have a tendency to overheat pans. I do when I'm talking, you know, to the camera and I'm distracted. I'm really excited about something. After years of um, cooking fish, this is my preferred method. Uh, I would love to eat Golden Krispies every day, deep fried at 350 in, uh, in oil, but that is not good for your bodily functions. So, uh, what I have found that is semi-healthy and still gets that that nice golden crisp is I do a little bit of olive oil actually half olive oil half butter and that seems to work really well and uh, just shallow pan fry pump let's pump it up just a little bit more oh you be careful I think that pan is really hot yeah oh gosh you know what's kind of, it's coming out of the uh the corn <laughs> the corn water is hitting the oil and it's making a Clean up, clean up on the fish aisle. All right, brown butter and olive oil. This way we get some of that nice buttery taste. The olive oil uh, hand handles the heat of the pan better. And we are now ready to add our fish, folks. So we'll add our traditionals, make our golden crispies while the fish cakes are in the oven. A lot going on, a lot to keep up with, but here we go. There we go. I'm gonna pump that back up. This is gonna cool down. I'm gonna do a couple of these at a time. So here is the key with doing your fish like this. This is where a lot of people make a mistake. Uh, they get excited when the fish gets hot and they want, they're like, oh no, I don't wanna burn it. And they, they move it or flip it too early and it takes off your seasoning. Some folks like to really like add a wet binder and really stick that stuff on there. I just do it like this and then I use a stainless steel pan or a cast iron and when the fish will kind of remove itself from that stick, that means it's ready to flip. You, you have done it perfectly several, several times and I feel like I never really trusted it because I'm one of those people, especially with chicken, that like want to move it every couple minutes so it yes. doesn't stick. But I don't know, you've got it figured out with the cast iron or with the uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel, that's just kind of how stainless works. It, it uh, it's, it's what the pros use. That's how they cook on it. And uh, it's key just con keeping a consistent temperature, which I haven't done right here, but uh, that is typically how it works. So just don't get, don't get excited and flip, flip the fish too early if you're shallow pan frying. If you are in a deep oil bed, then it's okay because you know, you're suspended in oil. Speaking of oil, we got like oil on the lens right here. S smashing butter on the screen. Getting a little brown on the side. I'd love to see that. This is gonna be a light crisp. Last time we cooked these, you said I did too much. You were like, yeah, it was too much. It's too much on there, it's too salty. Oh, uh, it was salty. <laughs> yeah, and, and so I, I really wanna see now because I, did, I didn't heavily coat these like, like I normally do, so. That's good. Everyone's different, different buds, different suds, that's okay. Wow, has it already been eight minutes? It's time for a check. It just, it just, uh, a little brown, but I'm not, I'm not convinced. No, I'm not either. Maybe a couple more minutes? Yep, a couple more. Um, I would say it's a 10, it's a 10 minute deal. Yeah, especially about how much we put in there. Yeah, big chunky. These are about ready for a flip. So we'll grab our, our flipper. Let's just see what's cracking here. Let's see what this other side's looking like. Oh, yeah. Oh. Trying to do it one handed with the camera. What bam! Golden Krispies. You notice these fish are just like, oh gosh, sliding. Sliding around, they're just ready to be flipped. Don't want to 
with it too hard though, because then you get that splash of death. Nice crust on that. Gordon Ramsay, where are you at with that crappie, dude? I don't know if you can keep up with that. Mmm. Butter and olive oil. Look at that. See, notice the flakiness. Mm. The flakiness falling apart. You start to get that separation. That's what you want. Now these are not deep fried. These are just these are just nice little butter and olive oil shallow pan fry. So second batch going in. Don't flip them until they're ready to flip. If you're using stainless, uh, cast iron. Very similar, very similar. But follow the method, you will enjoy. We did four minutes, twelve minutes total. Let's see, what, let's see what's going on. Here. Ready? Yeah. We want them to be a little brown. A little more brown. There we go. I feel like that's it. That's it. That's it right that's there. It. Very nice. Oh, oh. Here we go. They look like little uh, popcorn balls. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and taste your, taste your piece, this one right here. Just me and this guy right here. Look at that, ooh, look at that little, little butter bubble on that. My, oh man. Mm. Mm. Is that good? Mm. Are you sure? Mm. Are you positive? <laughs> Sounds pretty good. You get the butteriness? Off that butter, obviously. <laughs> Classic like, line. You get like that butter. <laughs> a butteriness off the butter. Uh, it kind of tastes like bu uh, buttered popcorn a little bit. But then there's there's a uh, there's actually like a little zestiness that comes from the seasoning. So you almost get like a like a lemon and then like just a just a bready nice finish. It's really nice. You want to try it? I do want to try it. I do have lemon. Do we need to squirt uh, some lemon? I don't lemon? think you need it, no. I'll just try it. Taste the butter. You like it? Taste the zinginess. It's not overly Zingy. salty. Okay, good. You okay. did good. You like this batch better. Mm -hmm. I do. Just beautifully golden. Beautifully golden. Ready to go. My gosh, that'll just make you want to go catch more. All right, fish is done cooking. Got a couple little extra nuggets in there sizzling. I just want you guys to see that there's hardly any of that fry left in there. That's, that's what you want. You don't want like a bunch of fry coming off of your fish. So when cooked properly, they should look like this. Now we just need to try the fish cakes. Are we ready? I'm ready. I'm really I think we're ready. ready. Okay. It might be cooled off. And if you, if you want to set it off, you want to go up an extra notch. What is that? This is a sauce. This is a uh, this is mayonnaise with ketchup and some fresh ground black pepper. It's pretty pretty amazing. Let's mm. oh yeah, look at that! My goodness, that's what dreams are made of. It's got some bulk to it. I love a good crappie cake that doesn't fall apart when you pick it up. Mm. What do you got on that? There's a lot more breading on the inside than I realized. Mm -hmm. I on the outside, it doesn't look like very much. You thought I didn't put enough, but I think there's plenty. Oh yeah, and that that breading will kind of expand, is mm -hmm. what we've learned. Fish is cooked perfectly. Cooked perfectly. That was 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think I would add just a tiny bit more of the seasoning. Of the fry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Breading is perfect. The amount of mayonnaise is perfect. They don't taste the mayonnaise, but it's a good binder. Fish is perfect. Just a tiny bit more of the seasoning fry. It's there. You want to bite? I do. I do. I really do. All right. Big, big crappie cake fan. It's a big bite. Oh my gosh. I would agree with you. Maybe just a hair more of this, just to add a little zesty pop. Mm -hmm. But you could also just throw like mm. a little bit of salt mm -hmm. in there. Maybe the know, salt really needs pepper. to top it with salt. You know, like a splash mm. of cayenne. My gosh. You know what? It's perfect for the kids, though. It is. Just look at this. Look at the, look at the flappers. What? The Let's what? get a close-up shot. The, look, at this? A, <laughs> look at a close-up. A detailed look. Look at that. My gosh. It's just perfect. Like 
great kids play. That is an ultimate kids play. Are you kidding me? We just we just need some fresh okra from the garden. Not quite time yet. No, Folks at home, you pick what you like. Try these both. But my gosh, it's nice to have crappie options. Kids love these things. I mean, it's just like fish sticks. But it's just more fresh and delicious. Well, guys, catching the fish is really fun. But sometimes what I enjoy the most is coming home and watching the family eat and really enjoying it, truly enjoying it. And I try to do a good job with the meat preparation and the cooking so that they really do enjoy it. And uh, OSG does a great job as well, just preparing a lot of the things that I bring home, you know, whether it's from the woods or on the water, it really doesn't get much better than a fresh caught crappie. And you know what? Sometimes Stephanie will come to me and she'll say like, hey, do we do we have any more blue catfish in the freezer? And I, th I think we might be out. And I'm like, you know what, honey, I think we are at. I think I need to go catch some more. And it just keeps this perpetual cycle of catch, clean, and cook going. And it was really cool today to catch some fish on one of my hand-tied jigs. One of my little Guggen 16th ounce hand-tied jigs that I made, Guggen Green, really cool. Just a fun time of year to go catch them. So you guys, googlesquad.com, link down below. Get, get you some gear, get some of the new uh, tubes, get some of the jig heads, and don't forget about the batter. Uh, the fish fry it is now available. It is tasty, y'all. I'm telling you, it is really good. So uh, do yourself a favor and do me a favor. Try some. Link down below. Use my promo code LFG and save at checkout. But thank you guys for being here on these adventures. Uh, next up, we got, we got one more adventure that we're going on, and it deals with catching crappie more on the bank. So... Yeah, we got our uh, like offshore floater crappies, and then we got crappies coming in. So we got we got a little more of that if you guys are interested. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys soon on the next one.